Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. Here it is, January the 7th, 2023. We've got a pretty low tide right now. It's supposed to be rising uh, a little bit later this morning. So our plan today is uh, we're gonna target some sheephead early this morning. We're in the intercoastal waterway here in uh, Port St. Joe, the Panhandle of Florida. So we've got some live shrimp. We looked for some fiddler crabs, couldn't find any. Bait shop didn't have any, so we're gonna go with some live shrimp today. So come on and join us. That one, first fish of the day. Pretty nice, pretty nice uh, strike. Got some nice uh, bend in the rod here. Took out a little drag where I could get the camera on, but let's get them up and let's, there we go. All right, hopefully this is our first sheep's head of the day. It sure is. He's gonna keep, I believe. Let's get him up and... All right, look at that. First sheep's head of the day. Let's, let's get him unhooked, check his size. All right, first sheep's head of the day. Turned out to be a 15 inch sheep's head. Cut on the birds of prey sheep's head jig. So we're gonna get him in the box and try to get another. All right, well, let me show you what I'm using today. I have a Okuma Simar C40. It's a kind of a 4,000 size reel. Got a TFO Professional 7.6 medium fast action. Um, I've got a 20 pound braid on here and a 20 pound fluorocarbon bird of prey jig with a number one hook. Just had a couple strikes and lost my shrimp again, but it seems like for some reason, I cast to that third piling, a couple feet off from it, let out a little slack and let it drop, and then close the bale. Seems like that's where all my strikes are coming from. There we go, getting some nibbles. go oh. let's check our shrimp well as you can see he got half of it so we're getting strikes we're getting nibbles got two fish in the box Well, they sure are living up to their nickname, the convict fish. Getting that shrimp off right before the hook. And these are kind of small shrimp, so, you know, you just, that kind of thing happens, just kind of keep at it. fish on oh oh some good drag I thought I had the bottom at first obviously this is not the bottom come on mr. sheephead we're all friendly up here assuming this is a sheep's head it's almost acting like a redfish let's see what we got here he's pulling White hard, yeah, it feels like a redfish. Yeah, we're going under the boat. Let's get out of let's get out of the engine. Nope, just a nice sheep's head. Nice sheep's head. Here we go. Let's get up here, buddy. 
Let's get up here. You want to get in this net, don't you? All right. That's a nice sheep's head. Nice sheep's head. Boy, he swallowed that one, I think. Let's see if we can get that, get our bird of prey jig back. He's about 16 and a half. Now, to measure these fish in Florida, what you want to do is go from the tip of the mouth to the fork of the tail, right about there. And he was about 16 and a half. So, in Florida, you get to keep eight of these. So, we got three in the box so far. So, we're going to put him in the box and we're going to get our bait back out and see if we can't catch him more. Look at this coming up the intercoastal waterway. That's a nice double hull boat right there. Nice boat. Well, you can cruise in style in that. Beautiful boat. Look at that. Is that a hot tub on the back? Huh. Beautiful. Now let me show you how I'm rigging this shrimp here. First off, I just pinch last part of the tail off. Then I'm going to take the shrimp and I'm just going to thread this hook through the shrimp so that I can hide that hook as much as possible and just get that hook coming out where it needs to be. Here we go, We're getting some nibbles. There we go. Got him, got him. Oh, he's a good one. Oh, he's a good one. Stay on, buddy. Oh, st you're coming up to the boat. Stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. All right, we got him. Boy, it sure felt like he was off for a second. Let's see. Yep, another nice sheep's head. Nice sheep's head. I keep saying that, but golly, they're all nice. But I do think this may be the bigger one. All right, let's get up here, boy. Where's my net? All right, let's get. Oh, he got off. Oh, what a bummer. What a bummer. That's kind of what happens when you're out by yourself and you try to net, reel, and everything yourself. Kind of lose your angle and lose your attention to the fish so well let's get another shrimp and get it out there hey puppies oh catching a dog doing his business <laughs> you thought you were going away to hide didn't you behind the barrels <laughs> what you see you see my fish He's smelling something. Oh, there he goes. Life of a dog on a dock. Let's check the old lure for some shrimp. Oh, it's still there. See, I'm using a little piece of shrimp. That's about the size that that last big one was on that I lost. So they don't have to be big. You know, because their sheep's head's mouths are small. And you want them to hopefully take take the shrimp in in one big bite so to get the hook. Look at this dog. In the water. having trouble getting back up the hill. There they go. I don't know if you can see it. They're after a pelican now. A pelican snipping back at them. 
You can hear the pelicans beat. This <laughs> is snapping at the dogs. Oh, here's some bites. Come on. All right. Got him. 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 All right. All right. Oh, but it got off. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Well, getting bites. Surely can't complain about that, but. Geez, I'd surely like to get him on the boat. All right, well, let's get another shrimp. Here we go, a couple little nibbles. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Got him, got him, got him, got him. All right, let's stay on the hook this time, buddy. Come on, let's stay on the hook, stay on the hook, stay on the hook. Let's give him a little. All right, come on, buddy. Stay on the hook. I don't know if he's as big as the one we lost, but I think he's gonna keep. You can just get him up, come on. All right, got him in the boat. Got him in the boat. Yeah, he's gonna keep. Yeah, I don't think he's as big as the other one. But I uh, was beginning to think the bite had stopped. Well, let's go ahead and get him off the hook. All right, another nice keeper sheep's head. He was just a little over 14, so gonna go ahead and put him in the box. Never seen their teeth before. You know, you can see they've got those little munchers there kind of crush open crabs and you know get after shrimp and oysters and barnacles and things so that's why you want to kind of have a small hook and uh, it's the reason why they're hard to get because they kind of munch and crunch instead of gulping it down so happy with that we're going to get him in the box and get another hook out there there we go here's some nibbles come on buddy all right got him got him oh we got off again Hence the name Convict. Well, let's give it another go. Here's some nibbles. Come on, buddy, take the whole thing. Take the whole thing. Here we go. Got him. Got him. Got him. Now let's stay on the hook. Stay on the hook. Feels like a decent one here. Trying to go deep. Come on up, buddy. Come on up, buddy. Got a little net ride for you. Ooh, he looks like a nice one. Nice one. Where's that old net? Come on, buddy. Oh, 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 not back down, not back down. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Right there. See the lure in the corner of the mouth. All right. Got him in the boat. Yes, sir. He looks like a good one. Yes, sir. Let's get you out the net. Something you don't want to do, is it? Let's get you out. Let's get you out. Let's get you out. Oh, yeah. He was hooked good. Boy, this bird of prey jig. You don't have it in your tackle box. You need to get, get you some. I see a lot of boats coming and going out here. Nobody's really staying. So, I don't know if, what they're using, but I don't think see too many people catching stuff whoa well let's get a measurement on him well he's still pretty green nice sheep's head 
nice sheep's head. So let's get a measurement on him. About 16 and a half. Good sheep's head. Let's go ahead and get him in the box. All right, so I just got stuck on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the bale and see if the current doesn't just kind of wash it off the rock that it's stuck on. Give it a couple seconds to hopefully dislodge, kind of change positions on the boat as well. Let's see if that did the job. No, I pretty much set the hook into the rock, so I imagine it's stuck pretty good, but, you know, a lot of times this will work if you just release the bell, let the current kind of move it off and around the, the structure a little bit, and it may just pop off for you. Sometimes you just have to pull back on it, I hope you don't lose your lure. It's still there. I have a feeling I lost it. And when you lose your line like that or you've got some significant slack in your line and you're using these spinning reels, be sure to grab your line like this. Get a little pressure on it so when it goes onto the reel, it's not going to be, you know, a bunch of loops and, uh, you know, going loosely and you'll have some twists and tangles later on. Yeah, we lost our, lost our jig. All right, well, let me tie another one on. Now what I'm doing, I'm casting close to those rocks and then let a little slack in the line and let that sinker just kind of float down the bank of those rocks, you know, getting deeper and deeper. And eventually, I think, settles 10 or 15 feet from the shore. And I can tell them on rocks, obviously I just lost that one in the rocks, but, but um, you know, as I, as I kind of reel up the slack and kind of get things tight I can you know can feel it bumping against the rock so I know I'm on rocks and then I just kind of wait just wait for that sheep head to find your shrimp but you've got to kind of be still and focused because these strikes and these nibbles are not that strong and you kind of want to be ready when that happens Boy, it's like glass all of a sudden. There's two other boats out here. Well, they've been situated on their spot for quite some time. But I like this spot, obviously. There's fish on it. But I like that there's some dock structure as well as some rock structure. As I kind of look down the way where they are, it appears to be just some dock structure. So having the rocks here as well as the dock structure, definitely it's going to hold more sheep's head than uh, just the dock structure you would think. All right, the uh, wind has changed directions and I think the current is starting to come in. So the boat has shifted around even though the spot lock's been on the same position this whole time the boat flipped around so maybe that's a good sign for getting some more water movement and maybe we catch a couple more sheep head before we head in we've got six in the box we can keep eight if we can get two more we'll have our limit but uh you know we'll just see how it goes here all right, so I really didn't get any nibbles or bites after the tide changed, and it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and head on back to the house. Got six beautiful sheep's head in the cooler. So I'm gonna call that a successful day, and we'll see you back at the house.
right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean these fish here. These fish have really tough skin, like a redfish. So you're going to need a serrated knife um, or a really sharp knife just to get through this skin. To save the blade on my regular fillet knife, I've got this electric knife. I'm going to use that just to kind of go through the skin and then I'll use my regular fillet knife to get the, to get the fillet off the fish. And then you just go through and just make your slit along the back. And then once you have your slit, you've gone through the skin, then you can just start working it off the bones here. Just kind of following along to the backbone. Now what I like to do when I get most of the skin off and, and when I get the fillet off to the ribs, then I go ahead and go just, I mean the ribs are gonna be right here, so I just go right beyond the ribs. So I won't have to cut through the ribs. And then just follow the backbone all the way out. Now we're gonna leave these on, the skin on, to cook these on the grill. So I'm not, uh, so I went ahead and cut all the way off. So then, this is probably the trickiest part to any big fish like this. It's getting the fillet off these ribs. Now the ribs, to get them off, you're gonna have to go up. You're gonna have to go up with your knife and around them. So you feel like you're losing meat, but you're not. It's kind of following up. Then once you get through the skin, and you can just cut it off. There you go. Now you want to get rid of this part. What you can do is kind of feel for where those bones are. And make sure you get those off. You're doing this step. And there you go. So, I feel like I got all the bones. There's one right there. There we go. All right, so we just have to flip and do the other side. All right, everybody, it's the next day, and we're going to cook up these sheep's head for lunch. And as you saw when I cleaned the fish yesterday, I left them on the half shell. And if you're unfamiliar with what that means, it simply means you just leave one side of the skin on. That's really good for fish like redfish, red snapper, sheep's head obviously, fish that have real big scales and real thick skin. Because basically it's a built-in cooking vessel. So when you grill or smoke, um, it, it, it really keeps the fish from burning and you don't have to flip the fish. And so that works really well when grilling so that your fish stays together um, and doesn't fall apart when you do that. So I'm gonna get started, I've got the grill preheating but but first um, I'd like to show you how I make uh, my homemade tartar sauce all right so what I'm gonna use to make this tartar sauce is just some things I had around the house this this uh, recipe actually came about just one time we didn't have tartar sauce and just kind of threw it together so that's your basic uh, ingredients for a tartar sauce I'm gonna use some some mayonnaise um, some prepared horseradish make sure you don't get the uh, creamy horseradish or um, that kind of thing make sure it's the kind of prepared uh, you know kind of pure horseradish um, yellow mustard oftentimes if I have Dijon mustard or spicy brown mustard I'll use that instead um, but that's just kind of what I have in the fridge today and then um, some dill relish so what I like to do is just you know this is a mayonnaise based uh, tartar sauce is a mayonnaise based type of you know, product so that, that should be good enough. You just kind of eyeball everything. None of this is, none of this is um, measured out in any sort of way. Now, horseradish, you know, can be, can be quite uh, strong. So, you know, kind of start out with just a little bit at first. Um, 
and then you can always add more later. And I just put a little mustard. A little mustard goes a long way just to give it that little extra taste. And then you could add more or less of these ingredients as you like them. I like to get a, go a little light on the, the dill relish. And that's it. Simple. Like I said, just from products in your refrigerator already, most likely. So I'm going to put that to the side. You like my towel I got for Christmas when we got the Grady uh, person that got this for me just couldn't pass it by. So I thought that's pretty funny. All right, so I'm going to get these fish prepared. So what I'm going to do to season these fish, I'm going to use um, two products in cooking this fish. The first is just this Chef Paul's um, Seafood Magic. You could use Old Bay. You could use Tony C's. Um, you know, most anything you like. Um, a lot of times, just whatever you have around the house. But you know, this fish is this fish is fresh, and oftentimes with fresh fish, you tend to really not need to season it that much. But we want to put a little flavor flavor profile on this. About like that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cook these a little bit. Um, and then towards the end or mid, I'm going to put some of this garlic butter sauce. Never tried this before, but um, my wife picked it up at the store. I'm going to use this gas grill here. Usually I like to use charcoal. It tends to work a little better, less flare-ups. Um, you can um, just get a little better taste out of charcoal. But um, ours got blown away by the uh, Hurricane Michael a couple years ago and just never replaced it. Just picked up this cheap gas grill from Home Depot at some point in time. So that's what we're going to use. It'll be just fine. So uh, I'm going to get the fish on. So I scraped the grill down. Now I'm going to just put a little olive oil on the uh, grates here just to keep that underside from sticking. It's so hot right now. It's so hot it might not stick anyway, but just gives a little bit of a protection um, so your fish doesn't stick. So I had the grill preheated to high. I'm going to turn it down just to maybe a medium high. This grill runs a little hot, so I have to kind of be a little careful. I've got three burners on this grill, so I'm going to try to keep these fish off the direct heat as much as I can. I didn't mention, but um, you saw the paper towel in here. I, I rinsed the fish off just to get any last um, slime on them and then um, patted them dry so they were pretty dry when I put them on. So I'm going to go ahead and close that lid. And I'm going to let this go for probably about 10 minutes first and uh, then come back and check it and then see where we are from there. All right, so it's been about five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, Louisiana brand garlic butter sauce on. I had to turn the grill down a little bit, had some flames coming up. I didn't want it to cook too fast. Oh, that should be good. All right, so let's go for about another five minutes and we'll come back and check it. All right, so it's been 12 minutes. I checked it at 10. Let's check it at 12. What you're kind of looking for, it's looking good to me. Yeah, you've got some, some nice, firm, flaky fish, but yet it's still juicy. Yeah, those look really good. And see how that uh, butter garlic sauce is kind of, um, kind of browned on the top? So this is, looks wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and get this gas off. Now when you take these up, when you have the skin on the bottom, um, you want a big plate. What you don't want to do is stack your fish because this underside is going to be charbroiled, you know, and black and, you know, that kind of thing. And you don't want it to get on your other fish. So I like to kind of have an oversized plate. That way I don't have to stack them. See, that kind of comes off like that. So you kind of want to be careful with that so that doesn't get on top of your fish. All right, so there we go lovely plate of fish. All right, so I'm going to get, let these cool for a second and then we'll take a bite. All right, so I'm going to try this fish. I'm going to try it without the tartar sauce first. Mm. 
You know, I think I did it right with the seasonings. Like I said, fresh fish does not need a lot of seasoning. And, and with this dry seasoning, um, that Chef Paul's, get a little bit of that, you know, Cajun um, type seasoning. And then that butter garlic was nice, how it browned on the top. That was a really, that's like I said, that's the first time I tried that. That was a really nice call with that. So um, really, really tasty, flaky fish. Let's try it with a little bit of this tartar sauce. Yeah, that tartar sauce is really good. Very simple, but really good. I think what, what I like most about it, it doesn't come from a jar and doesn't taste like jarred tartar sauce. I'm going to go ahead and get this fish inside. Family can have lunch. All right, y'all. I certainly appreciate you watching. It was a really good day fishing yesterday, getting all those sheep's head. That was really the second time I've been in that intercoastal waterway, um, and I was just super glad to get those sheep's head. You know, I think the takeaway from yesterday is a lot of people say, you know, fiddler crabs are sheep's heads candy and, you know, that's the best bait and, and, and that might be right. But the problem is they're really hard to get sometimes. I really couldn't find any tackle stores around here um, that, that sold them live. Um, you know, and I took a little time to try to find some myself yesterday and I couldn't. So, you know, I went with the live shrimp and I don't think I missed a beat. I think that was a good day fishing with the live shrimp. So, you know, if you can't find those fiddler crabs, get you some live shrimp and I think you'll be successful with some sheep's head. The other thing I think was a, a takeaway from yesterday is I found a spot that had two structures for sheep's head. You know, it had a combined of rocks and it had the combined of docks. And um, I think anytime you can find multiple structures like that, I think you're going to increase your chance to, to catch fish. So um, those are our two takeaways from yesterday. If you're unfamiliar with what I do on this channel, is I'm new to this area. I've been fishing saltwater most of my life, but I'm, you know, new to this area, and so I'm learning. And so what I want to do is take you with me and then share some of my knowledge and tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and apply those to, to, to learning this new area. And so maybe that can help you in your area as you search for new grounds or, or maybe you're starting to fish a new area as well. So certainly appreciate you watching and please hit that subscribe button below. We want to grow this channel, reach as many people as we can, and we'll see you on next episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.